happens to couple with uh, severe weather, like a cold spell or something like that, uh, you'd be experiencing loss of heating uh, in uh, residences and buildings uh, as well. So, uh, you know, lots of uh, terrible things could happen. Perishable medications would be also a particularly acute uh, problem. For example, in the U.S. alone, we have, uh, I believe, in excess of a million people that depend on uh, uh, insulin for uh, diabetes uh, afflictions. And uh, loss of that medication could be quite critical uh, to those uh, people. We're almost sitting ducks. Well, really, I mean, when you really when yeah. you really look at the full context of what you're describing, our current condition is that to the extent that this does not become one of the top priorities, we're sitting ducks, really. We're just waiting for either a something that's generated by a human or a group of humans, or we right. are sitting ducks for something that occurs in space that impacts us here and does the same thing or worse. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, in the case of space weather, we th- we know these events of this size have occurred before. They will occur again. It's not, you know, it's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of uh, when. Uh, we think these events are typically uh, capable of occurring at about a one in fifty to one in a hundred year uh, sort of uh, basis. Uh, uh, the ironic uh, thing is that we built our power grid infrastructure largely over the last 50 years or or so, and we've been building this infrastructure without really awareness of of this type of vulnerability. And as a result, we've made it a very big uh, antenna to uh, couple efficiently to the uh, disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. What does that mean? Well, uh, it means that uh, whenever we have a disturbance in the Earth's magnetic field caused by the bombarding, you know, it being bombarded by uh, plasma or given off by solar activity from the sun, it, it causes a disturbance in that uh, field. Maybe a, a simple way of explaining it is uh, I can almost take you back to maybe a simple high school uh, science experiment. Okay. And uh, if you recall, you probably were presented with a, a loop of wire, copper wire, uh, connected to a electrical meter that would sense when current is flowing in that copper wire. And the instructor would take a simple bar magnet and he would move that magnet through the uh, copper wire. Well, uh, when he did that, he would cause a deflection in the electrical meter because the the moving of that magnetic field through that copper wire is essentially the same impact as a geomagnetic uh, disturbance. Only, in this case, the copper wire is the uh, power grid. Uh, and the bar magnet is the Earth's magnetic field itself that's being moved or disturbed by a- activity uh, originating from the uh, sun, and it's inducing these currents that flow in the power grid that can damage the power grid itself. So then is, is, it, is it possible to correct the grid or to purpose the grid at the level of the transformers in such a way where this can get done quickly? Yes, it is a solvable problem. Uh, We've uh, we've gotten to this point where we're so vulnerable, mainly because we've been building grid, the the power grid, uh, without awareness of this threat. And it's it's somewhat like... uh, we built these big skyscrapers only to discover after the fact that we built them along the San Andreas fault line. That's a great and analogy. We never had a seismic code uh, for these buildings. So we have to do some remedial uh, measures on the power grid to block these uh, currents that would enter the power grid uh, uh, 
uh, during these uh, geomagnetic storms. And uh, doing it for geomagnetic storms also hardens us uh, for the uh, same sort of threat that is posed by an EMP uh, type of uh, burst. Uh, so we get the benefits of a, a two-for-one uh, sort of uh, scenario uh, there. Uh, we think this is doable within a matter of a few years uh, time frame. Uh, we're not talking about a technology that we have to go out and, and uh, do a lot of research to develop. Uh, we think we've got some uh, technologies in hand, so it's not, uh, it's not a real uh, technology push uh, from that standpoint. We think the, uh, the hardening can be done for a relatively reasonable cost, you know, on the order of a billion dollars uh, for the, to cover the bulk of the uh, U.S. grid. So in terms of the trillion dollars of infrastructure investment that we already have, it's round off here. And in terms of saving millions and millions of lives and future generations of this country, uh, it's, it's a very uh, in consequential uh, sort of investment. Uh, the problem is that uh, we still, uh, you know, we're still at very early days in trying to uh, help this infrastructure understand what the uh, problems are and, uh, uh, you know, marshal the uh, uh, agreements on how to uh, go forward. Don't you think that with this level of understanding on a broad base and this critical vulnerability that there should be no politics allowed to get in the way of correcting this as soon as possible, that it almost should be ushered in as soon as possible, meaning politics does not apply here. It shouldn't be allowed to get in the way of protecting this civilization and starting here. That's right. I mean, uh, it, it, it would affect uh, the nation as a whole, you know, both political parties or, yeah. of course. In other words, the politics <laughs> really shouldn't enter into it because it's a whole system's concern. That, that's right. Uh, in the interactions that we've had with some of the uh, people in Congress. Uh, there's people on both sides of the aisle that see it this way as well. That's good. Uh, and uh, I, I don't, you know, while on the one hand there's some uh, people that uh, uh, may for political reasons not be warm to the idea of anything involving nuclear weapons uh, and expenditures related to nuclear weapons, uh, we also have to understand that th this is also a naturally occurring uh, phenomenon as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we, we will not have the ability to shoot down the sun. Uh, <laughs> you know, if uh, people play the game of uh, wanting to spend on hardening versus wanting to spend monies on uh, missile defense and uh, uh, approaches like that. I would imagine that this would be the Defense Department, the Pentagon, everything related to the military, that the military would get this quickly and I say, you military... know what, we're spending billions and trillions on all these other areas in the military, yet we've got this weak link that we're just sitting there and the whole thing can go up in smoke. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yes, that's uh, probably true in that sense. Uh, Arguably, it's probably not the military's mission to be concerned about uh, this. It's more in the purview of uh, Homeland Security and Department of Energy. Okay, Homeland and, Security uh, and the we, Department of Energy, then. Yeah. And again, these are modest uh, expenditures, even in the realms of uh, their budgets. Uh, uh, but, uh, like I said, we're at very early days. There is no commitment for funding. Uh, by uh, these agencies to solve this problem. That's stunning. Uh, that is absolutely there is, stunning. There is no, uh, you know, that while there is congressional action being debated, talked about, there's hearings on this uh, last summer, uh, there has been no legislation uh, passed uh, through either House of uh, Congress.